Welcome to Criminal Giants, a comedic true crime watch along podcast where we watch criminal minds and discuss the true crime that can be linked, however indirectly, to the episode. We're your hosts, Stacey Johnson and Veronica Shea, and this week we're joined by Heather Pasternak and discussing Season 1, Episode 4, Plain Sight. What an emotional roller coaster that episode was. Okay, so this is episode four in season one. Elle is still just the most annoying character on the planet. But it starts with a lady exercising in her house, and then she gets killed. They're bullying Reed for being young and inexperienced at sex, because that was the early 2000s. He has a cute crush on JJ that goes really nowhere. Uh, And we meet the Tommy killer, who is the serial killer, who's writing in, like, lipstick on the mirrors, which is why it's linked to the lipstick killer. He's writing a one-sided ballad between Lady and Death, and he spends a lot of time in the house afterwards, we learn, moving things, breaking things, putting things away. And then we get the second rape victim, who is raped by someone else, because that does happen, because violence against women is rampant. Mm -hmm. should be clarified, the second one was just an attempt. That's true. It was an attempted... We think Because the husband came in and interrupted it correct yes but they profiled that the tommy killer would feel inadequate in his own life and wants the recognitions of his crimes which is why he started writing the poems and we get gideon's bird obsession starting that he knows all the birds i just really appreciated how the subliminal message of the whole episode is that this guy's a murderer because he's a bad relationship with his mom so like somehow it's still a woman's fault i feel yeah, oh, that's that is <laughs> completely quite honestly one of the running themes in most serial killers and specifically sexual serial killers is that they will have a domineering and a humiliating female presence, usually the mother in their life. Yeah, it's always the woman's fault. Yeah. Did you not know that? It's our original sin. It was very clear in this episode. <laughs> I thought I had something witty to say to that, and I was really trying to pull it out, but I was like, oh, shoot, I'm leaving her hanging there. <laughs> I was like, no one is responding. That's okay. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. We felt too depressing. We're just taking it in. We're like, oh, yeah, everything's our fault. Like, yeah, like, you're not wrong. It's all true. Yeah. Uh, not great. I mean, I'm not that familiar with the whole series. So is that a common thing or is that just a common truth in murderers and serial killers and shit <laughs> or both? Both. So okay. it is a common thing in serial killers and therefore in the show because yeah. that's just what it is. But like, but, dude, I gotta be nice to my baby. <laughs> yeah, you like really can't fuck up your kid. But like Ed Kemper, he killed a bunch of people and then the last person he killed was his mom. That's who he like. Oh, wow. All this like anger was redirected, which is also what they say like there aren't very many female serial killers because women are more efficient and will just kill the one thing they're mad at. Uh huh. Mm. Whereas men have to like pussyfoot around it. Yeah. Until they get interest themselves up to like man i can do this and then yeah wow yeah so just a little little fun fact yeah no you're right i was watching this episode okay i feel like i talk about this other show too much (laughs) this podcast but like i was watching this episode of law and order svu last night well it's like the og sex crime show exactly how could you not bring it in Right, completely. And they were talking about a serial rapist, and he had, like, done all of these, like, really horrible crimes leading up to the one that, uh, like, when where he was, like, molested as a child, and he ended up, like, leading up, building up, building up, building up, like, getting more aggressive and more aggressive and more people until he could get up the courage to, like, completely take out the one that was, like, the crux of what started it all off. Yeah, the one that matters. Yes. Okay, so the best part, I think, of this episode is we finally got Shamar more out of a, like, button-up shirt. So Mm. let's go ahead and do our Gimme More. Yeah, let's talk about what this podcast is really all about. Gimme, gimme more. So we still do kind of have the purple. Heather, in literally the first five episodes of this season, he is wearing purple at some point. Really? They keep him in purple for a long time. He's got signature color palette. (laughs) Apparently. Imagine that it's like one of those button up shiny shirts. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's mostly what we've seen so far. Okay, Stace, do you want to give us your helpings rating? Yeah, and I'm really going to set the bar right now because... 
just based on the photo alone and the look that he's doing in the photo, like this whole, it was just such a solid moment that I was like, that gives me five helpings. Like I'm at top tier. He's got like stunning eyes in this, like giving me that like baby doll, baby girl look, you know, when he calls uh, Garcia, oh my gosh, rude baby girl it's like the beginning of the baby girl moment for me yeah okay so you're five helpings yeah, i'm five helpings wow on this one. a big deal that is a big deal i would say i'm pretty close i'm gonna give it a four helpings just because in this scene he was <laughs> like by picture alone it is quite up there especially because i was yeah. able to get a very good <laughs> Photo, which yeah. has been a struggle for me but i would say that in the scene he's like muffins shut the fuck up i know my gosh it's because i had the carpet cleaners here and she's sitting on wet carpet That's cute what she said. but he's like banging his fist on the counter and like i need to know where this guy is right now it's like very dramatically over the top mm-hmm. so i'm gonna give him a four stars or four Ooh. helpings yeah i'll give him five i mean okay what the hell? He's a man who's not my husband and he's making eye contact with me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he's obviously very, <laughs> very handsome. He looks a little a little serious, but you know, it's a serious show. There's some serious shit happening. It's going down. Yeah, he's trying to save Check. ladies. Yeah, he looks pensive as fuck in a hot way. And look, he's got backup. The other dude's behind him. Like, yeah, what he said. You know what I mean? Like, he's definitely like alpha in the shot. He is very alpha which I approve. Mm -hmm. Yes. I I think that's what I'm like on this one. It was that the alpha aspect or I was like, Oh, he's assertive. He's assertive in this. Yeah. He's like, we're not having pizza for dinner again or whatever. Sure. (laughs) Sure. It's a little bit of an insight into what happens at the Pasternak house. (laughs) Okay. Well, Heather, do you want to take us through this insane case? I mean, like, to be honest, forensic files, I watch them a lot. (gasps) Me too, girl. It's terrifying watching this shit, you know? I watch it because my husband likes to watch it, and it's fucked up because he makes us watch these murder things at night, and then he falls asleep, and I'm, like, left alone with the creepy ending. So, I don't know. Like, it was weird for me to sit down and watch this because I find it so wild how it's, like, too close to real life. (laughs) I'm like, I don't want to... That scene with the toddler and everything? Like, no, ma'am. No, thank you. Oh, yeah, because you have a kid. This is some twisted shit. I expect that you're an expert on this case at this point. I just find something they didn't uncover. I think what was fucked up was reading about the case and the Wikipedia and how, like, it, this happened in the 40s, right? The lipstick killer? 1946. It feels like there was a lot of coercion around, like, confessions and substances and, you know, like, it just feels very unsettling. Like, you know, at least in the dramatized version, you're like, they got the guy. But in the history version, you're like, wait, what happened? terrifying so i always tell people it's really funny because starting this like i live in a true crime bubble and i'm like oh there's like like criminal minds is so widely (laughs) received and watched like everyone watches it Mm. you know everyone Mm -hmm. watches svu that it's like oh everyone has the same sensibility and then i'm meeting so many people who are like oh i can't watch it because it's too dark and i'm like it's terrifying it's a cbs show i'm like it's (laughs) like is it dark like i don't know did you notice that like in this episode that the first moment where he like she's working out and he comes into take her she's scared but she's like Hoo. like it's like almost like <laughs> sketch of a murder like i appreciated that because i was like i'm not here to watch torture porn you know what i mean well they can't show very much for right. sure at cbs but i just thought it was so interesting like so many people think it's like so dark where for me mm-hmm. i'm like but you know that the good guys are going to win so it's like nice because right. you're like oh it's gonna be a happy ending mm-hmm. eventually it's not a happy ending for the people who die in the episode though that's not a happy ending is it <laughs> No, but we all die eventually, you know, and... Hopefully not while working out at home. I mean, don't work out, don't die. Right. I was going to say, it's hard enough to muster the courage to work out at all and then to die while doing it. Right. I mean... (laughs) That's why my New Year's resolution is always never involved around working out, because I don't want to die. The way they make it that it's always so psychological, like why somebody murders makes you feel like you could like talk someone out of it. Like if anyone was ever trying to murder you, like tell me about your mom. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of women who survive because they talk them through it. They're like so empathetic that when they're taken, they become like, there's this guy, Gary Heidnick, 
kidnapped women in Philadelphia, I think. And he kept them chained in this basement because he was trying to impregnate them. And this one woman was able to become his favorite because she empathized with him so much and be an upstairs non-chained lady who wasn't able to escape and get the police mm. oh. and save all the women. So there are women who like right. can talk the situation. I assume that's how you yeah. would be, Heather. We're taking self-defense classes, we should be taking psychology classes. That's right. <laughs> yes, uh, you're not wrong. We should be taking psychology classes. <laughs> what would that even be? Like intro to psychology for survival? Like it's what actually a hilarious that? like sketch idea. I might have to write it, guys. <laughs> Oh my God, yes, please. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so some things about William Hirons, which I think I'm saying his last name right, but he's also now known as the Lipstick Killer, which is insane, quite frankly. Okay, there's so much about him, but we'll just start with the murders first. He supposedly killed three people, Josephine Ross, Francis Brown, and six-year-old Suzanne Dagnan. I can't talk about the six-year-old. We can't. Sorry, I'm interrupting How old you. Is your kid? So hard. My, my my kid is too. Mm. Okay. Well, so he has some years. Yeah. You know. He better enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> So Josephine was found dead in her apartment. She was uh, repeatedly stabbed and a dress was wrapped around her head, which any profiler would tell you it is he knew her and it was too personal. So he had to cover her face. And they also show that sometimes as remorse, but mostly the depersonalization. Then Francis Brown was found a few months later, maybe six months later, mm -hmm. with a knife lodged in her neck and shot in the head. And that's when we got the first message written in lipstick for heaven's sake catch me before i kill more i cannot control myself which is the message we saw in episode one in this season when they were throwing every serial killer at the wall mm. and then the kidnapping of the six-year-old and when they found her she had been dismembered her killer was a torso killer which basically means everything gets taken off the torso and you usually find a torso a lot of times first but that's usually done to like hide the identity of the body this one was just done but this was an like the dad was employing the meat packers and it was during a meat packer union strike so they thought that it had to do there was a lot of threats around that and they thought it had to do with that so those are the three murders that he was supposedly were all the lipstick killer and i have a problem with that because it actually doesn't seem that these three murders are connected okay. at all <laughs> thank you i've been waiting for you to say that at because all. there's there's nothing like so when you look at like serial killers in general there's always that link like granted like what is it that's linking them why these three people whether that be like a motive or but like even sometimes like the nature of in how they are killed is different but there is always something linking the three and there was nothing linking these three people together yeah there was no signature there's no victimology you're talking about in the true thing where there was three yes in the Correct. true thing well they were all murdered <laughs> So there is that. There is that link. Yes, you are, you are correct. But they then, you know, arrested 17-year-old at that point, William Hirons. And he has an interesting past. Yeah. Because he was burgling since he was quite young and went to wayward school for boys for three years and then was let out at 16, continued burgling and actually broke into a place down the street from the Degnans, I believe, mm. uh, which is why he was arrested, because they were like, oh, he was in the vicinity and things were stolen from all of these places. But Josephine Ross's daughter was like, my mom's stuff wasn't in the stuff that Hirons had kept. So like, I don't think it's him. Mm. Like, it's just a very weird... Yeah, it's weird. There's like, re there was no evidence mm -hmm. except the, the, that he confessed, right? And like you were saying, Heather, they used drugs to get the this confession out of him. Yeah, which is now illegal to use because it's the truth serum stuff that they used to administer. And like, on top of that, when they did capture him, he was in extreme duress. Like, he had hit his head. Like, they had given him, like, right. they had beaten him be down. He was in extreme duress then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was just like, dang, I'd confess too. Yeah. 
and they had arrested people before. I was just curious, when was DNA a thing? Because this happened in the 40s is another reason why it's like, what? So Mm -hmm. DNA didn't become a thing and really until the late 90s. It was starting to get introduced in the early 90s, which we saw in the OJ case. Right, that's Mm -hmm. right. So it went very far off. They had that one fingerprint, but with only nine points. Yeah, and they said it was like smudge at first. It was a whole fucking thing. Yeah, it's a smudge. And then it was a nine point match. And the FBI is like, that means nothing. It has to be a 12 point match. Like even then the FBI was like, no, like this is not a thing. It's so sad that it all happened. (laughs) <laughs> I know. And he was Illinois' longest prisoner mm-hmm. because they locked him up at 17 and then he died in prison. At 83. 17 seems like a really young age to be doing such horrific stuff. But also when I think about being 17, I feel like, you know, your brain isn't fully developed in the sense of like, you don't develop compassion fully yet and stuff. No, that's very true. But it's interesting you say that because there were no violent crimes. Usually with those kinds of young offenders, you see violent crimes or peeping toms. Yeah. Or they steal women's underwear. Like he didn't steal women's underwear. He didn't, there was no cruelty to animals. There was no lighting fires. There was like none of that stuff. So it's, it really feels like a cover up job by the Chicago PD. And then they were like, and let's throw all of these murders at him, whether or not that works. So are you on Team William Hirons? Is that how you say it? I think I might be. I think that is how you say it. I think I might be. I don't think it was him. Like, we see a lot of false confessions. Well, then who was it, Veronica? we got to get to the bottom of this. Okay. So it was actually, this is why I had you on the program. I think it was your grandfather. <laughs> Shit. What? <laughs> Could you believe if I was like, so I've done some research. Because my dad's family is from Chicago. I know. I've researched heavily. <laughs> she like flips the computer over and she's got like a diagram with like strings and close ups of me. <laughs> like if you look over here, you can see. I'm <laughs> just hearing the cat. I know, my God. No, but this, I mean, it was like crazy. Everything that happened and didn't happen. And then his lawyers were like way more concerned with him taking a plea deal than trying to actually try the case. I think yeah. it's definitely one of those ones that like, what is that organization called? It's like the Innocence Project. The Innocence Project yeah. would win easily. Yeah. yeah. It seemed very much like a movie. Like it was a dramatization of like what happened. Like, for example, like I felt like I was reading the plot of like the movie Chicago, you know, like no <laughs> pun intended or like whatever. Like but, the musical Chicago? Yeah, exactly. Like it was just so ridiculous. Like someone came out later and stated that that the report that there was like the possibility of a reporter writing the lipstick on the wall just to garner like media attention and story and sell papers and things like that and I think there was a movement back in the 40s when we really started to pick up the idea of what a tabloid was and what tabloids were and I think like this was used as fodder in that. Okay now Heather the thing I love about Stacy is I have known her for 15 years and Mm -hmm. and she'll just be like the cute girl in the corner who just kind of pipes up with some weird and you're like okay Mm -hmm. Stacy and then on this (laughs) podcast every episode she was like and then there was a movement in the 40s and I'm like where (laughs) is this information (laughs) coming (laughs) from (laughs) what? Sometimes at night when I can't sleep I tunnel and look at weird stuff (laughs) those are my anxiety I can't sleep moments But yeah, no, it's crazy. First of all, that it was in the 40s. We don't hear about a lot of serial killers before Bundy, really. There was Zodiac. Mm -hmm. There was H.H. Holmes, Jack the Ripper. Like, they are there, but you don't hear. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a post-Bundy phenomenon. But then, like, I don't think this guy was a serial killer. I don't think the person who killed these people. I think it was three different people. I agree. I'm going to say something wild. I agree with you. (gasps) Two different people or three different people? I think it was three. You could maybe put the first two women together. Mm -hmm. Although, why the bullet? Yeah. Or he was killed or he went to jail for something else or, you know. But because also at some point they thought that the second victim, that Francis Brown, could have been killed by a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. That was their first thought. 
Right, but they didn't say why they thought that. Someone was seen leaving the apartment mm. building, and oh. the manager thought it could have been a woman, mm. I believe. Wild. What about the weird storyline in the episode where the husband is like, it was a black guy, and then they make it seem like no one okay. was letting the victim talk, and then like she goes outside and she's like, I don't know if it was a black guy. And then they're like, it was this that. black guy. Like, And then it ends up being the grocery delivery guy, right? Yes. So I am so mad because so I just recently reread Mindhunter and he talks about a case that that happened in. And they were like, this is just a one-off you know, rape, like that wouldn't have been cross racial. And I couldn't find it again to be like, that's this case. But it's, Mm -hmm. it is a real thing that happened when they were tracking down a white serial killer. Someone who would have fallen into the victimology was raped by a young black man, like a 17 year old. So black child. So sex crimes are usually committed in the same race. Is that true? Usually, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is true. It has become less true, but still it's very prevalent Mm -hmm. and a good indication but you will see in cities with high like mixed race neighborhoods you will see a mixed race you will see it in usually more cities because mixed race couples are more prevalent Mm -hmm. Um, but it is it is about this like the sexual desire of the person so like gary heidnick i was saying he is a white man but he only attacked black women Mm -hmm. And you'll get people like Gary Ridgway, who was the Green River Killer, who would attack anybody. It was just prostitutes. So that was really more about Mm -hmm. availability than preference. But if they're preferential, it will usually be all the same race. They'll all kind of look the same, like you see in Bundy's cases. Mm -hmm. Heather's learning a lot today. (laughs) I am. You feel safer having the knowledge. Like It's part of the obsession with this kind of stuff because you're like, if I can learn all the things... Yeah, I know what's out there. Yeah. I know what to look for. I am prepared. I'll tell you. I'd like to live next door to you. I have an if I die folder, like all kinds of things. Yeah, I was saying my strategy for murder is always just living in earshot of other people. Like when I was a single girl, I would always live in like a guest house or... Just so you could scream and then they would come hopefully and get you. I think that's the hope. What if they didn't? Then you have shit neighbors. Right. They're just like, oh, Heather's making a racket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heather's having wild sex again. Just again. Sc- screaming bloody murder. Yeah. She's an actress. You know who they are. <laughs> Stacey, I like your moody black wall. <gasps> Thank you. Do you want to see something even more fun? Yeah. There's a hot dog on it. <gasps> oh, yeah. That is fun. I like it. I want to ask that. Hot dog right above my bed, apparently. Yeah, I gotta get that sausage. I'm obsessed with hot dogs. <laughs> the taste and everything? They're just so good. My husband is always talking about the snap, the hot dog snap. Are you into the snap? Yes. It's all about the snap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the mark of a good hot dog. One of my dreams is to go to New York and they have at Coney Island the every 4th of July, the Nathan's National Hot Dog Eating Competition. And I just want to go watch one day. Don't you think that'd be really gross? Stacy? this is a real attainable goal. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I try to set really attainable goals so I don't get let down. You can do this. <laughs> Thank you. How long has that been your goal, Stacey? I don't want to talk about it. Because you've, <laughs> you've recently been to New York. Yeah, I just kind of forgot. <laughs> How often do they have the competition? Is it annual or what? It's every year. It's, yeah. like it's every the Friday. The guy has won for the past, like, yeah, it's every Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Nathan's hot dog sponsor us. Mm, right? <laughs> Wait, you said the same guy has won? Yeah, the same guy has won the past like 10 years. He wow. Ate, I think last year he ate, or the record is like 74 hot dogs in under 10 minutes. Ew. Yeah, it's a lot of hot dogs. It's a lot of meat. It does kind of make me want one though. It's been really nice like park hot dog weather. Yes. Uh, love a good park hot dog. That's 7.4 hot dogs a minute. Yeah. I, Jesus. Okay, real question. How <laughs> fast do you think you could eat a hot dog? Like, like swallow the whole thing? I mean, yeah, just like it's gone. Three minutes. Three minutes? If pushed, Two minutes. I would feel ill. After. Okay. <laughs> like Two Two minutes gone. Let's go. Two minutes. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right now I probably could do Everyone it in like go two get a hot minutes. Dog. 
Everyone go get a hot dog fast. <laughs> like, is, if there's some relish on there, one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> but now keep that up for the next 10 minutes. I'm good, babe. Thank you, though. Sorry. <laughs> My husband came in and asked if I want ribs. I'm like, I'm doing a podcast, babe. <laughs> You're like, no, I, I want a hot dog. <laughs> snorting, yeah, just snorting ribs on the side. I'll ask him what brand of hot dog he prefers when he comes back in case you need another sponsor. Yes, please. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're just working on our hot dog sponsorship this episode. I feel like murderers shouldn't get these cool names. Like, they're not drag queens. Like, why is he the lipstick killer? Like, you know what I mean? Right. The notoriety is a whole thing. Did anybody yeah. have the thought the entire time, like, of what brand of lipstick did he use? <laughs> They never touched on the lipstick thing. It's like, did he obviously used theirs, right? Yeah. But like, yeah. But like the notoriety thing, like that was even in the episode that he wanted to be famous. Right. You know what would be really weird is being the set designer who had to like do the lipstick on the mirror. Like, who's that person? Yeah. Was it an intern or was it handwriting? A veteran? Oh What's- God, I hope it's an intern. Yeah. <laughs> They had to like redo it because they spelled something wrong. Oh my gosh, that would be funny. You're like trying to get the lipstick off. That's a hard cleanup job. I like the part of the episodes where they go through the scenes and the details and they repeat things to themselves. They're like, why take the utensils from the thing if I was running from like the whole like, (laughs) I'm going to monologue as find the murderer and solve the case. Like that device, I feel like as an actor, like pulling that off in an audition is so wild. Just for like the audience. Or my favorite is when they tell each other things that the like they yeah. would know. <laughs> yeah. Where they're like, well, he's a sadist, whatever, and that means this. <laughs> and I'm like, you're telling your boss what it means. I'm like, he knows. Yeah. So we can all agree, you know, like whatever the thing is. So wait, we don't like L? Oh, I hate L. No. Yeah. Yeah. We're not a big fan. Why? To be fair, in this one, she was fairly inoffensive. Mm-hmm. But she's like, oh God, what is her deal? She's very insecure about being a woman in the unit is how she starts. And it's like this weird combative thing. And then she likes to call Gideon dad. And he's like, please don't call me that. <laughs> like, It's weird. She like, has boundary issues. And she's also just like a petulant child half the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not the actor's fault. I feel bad for her. She's really pulling off the like the 90s eyebrows, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yep, yep. She's doing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, if we're focusing on what she's doing well, she is doing that. <laughs> but can anyone do that well, or is she just doing it? You know? I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. I think some people can do it better than others. Like, I don't think I could do it very well. That's fair. She does have a very bird bone structure. Like, she's kind of mm-hmm. delicate. Yeah. And, like, she's very slender faced. I think that would help. Mm-hmm. And then you have more of a square jaw, high cheekbone. Also, it's like, like this, the bigger the space this is, you know? I like that we've just evolved to eyebrows. You know, I'm like, you want to, you want me to talk about the murder? And I'm like, let's talk about her eyebrows because the murder makes me sad. <laughs> this is something you don't get with the male comedians who come on. Yeah, what well, what do the male comedians what? do? They just want to talk about old oh, plays. I have to go get muffins. I have to go take care of my screen. Can muffin make an appearance? Like I want to see muffin. Can you bring yeah, muffin bring back? This. If she comes back without yeah, muffin, I'm gonna be cat. <laughs> I love cats. You know, I was a cat sitter. No, you were not. I was. I was a cat sitter. And I always, that's when I thought I was going to be murdered. I thought someone was going to follow me into someone else's home. And I would always be afraid about like forgetting to lock the door. That's fair. (laughs) Here comes the cat. I think her name's Mittens, actually. I just call her something different every time. Mittens. I think Stacey took her out of the room. She's like, fuck off. Okay. There was a request for... Where the fuck is this cat, Stacey? Do not come back and love the cat. (laughs) What do you think this is? I wish I... She's very mad right now. Oh, really? The blanket wasn't in the right place. Oh. I will have to show you a picture because I get maybe like 10 seconds worth of hold time okay. before she panics. I liked you walking across the screen <laughs> holding her out. <laughs> like, she's How old is she? She's like 25? She's, she's 20. God, she's she so just old. turned 20. She's old and crusty. Too. Should I go get my cat? What are we doing? Yeah, mine. Where's your dog, Veronica? Do you have a cat? He's sleeping in the corner. I do have a cat. And a dog? I used to have two, but then 
a coyote got her. Oh, she looks so <laughs> mad. <laughs> She's mad, dude. She is, and that's she her missing face. Her own, like, TikTok. I feel like she would just pop off. <laughs> She would. I was just honestly so surprised at how, like, just reading this now, it's just so blatant that, like, this was such a media storm and that it, like, took off. And there was that article that came out that really sank it for him, if that's the right word. And it was literally, like, the headline read, The Heron's Story, How He Killed Suzanne and two women like that was the headline and nothing else had come out and then they like sort of fabricated this confession out of it and I was just like everyone everyone's lying right now yeah no it was really wild he didn't do it like that he just he didn't have representation there was absolutely no evidence there I mean Mm -hmm. just he didn't do it I mean like he wasn't a great he might have done it he might have done it but it sounds like he wasn't given like innocence until proven guilty yeah right I was about to be like, I don't even know how they found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But then I remembered they didn't go to trial. <laughs> and back then, Miranda, the oh, what's that called? When you read your Miranda oh, rights, right. there's a law. Yes, that wasn't put back in place back then. So he no. didn't, right, he didn't have like... Oh yeah, he wasn't even allowed to talk to a lawyer for the, what, the first two days? Correct. No, four days, the first four days. He wasn't allowed to see his parents for the first two days, which is also now illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the Miranda rights, I think that was in the 80s, I want to say, yes. was Miranda v. Arizona? Something Am I right like with it? That. If I'm right on that, just... Everyone take a shot. No, if you're right, everyone need a hot dog. I'm ready. Uh, Miranda rights. Boop. Let's see. Ah, 66. Way off. But it was Miranda v. Arizona. So, half points. For anyone who doesn't know what the Miranda rights are, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Dang, you're pretty good at that. I should know that. You should know that with how much Law & Order you watch. That's how I learned it. literally hear it every episode. (laughs) What's your other podcast called? Law & Ovaries? (laughs) Oh, it is now. Thank you. Passion. Nobody take it. Patent pending. (laughs) You're not inventing something, Stacey. I'm inventing life. Good for you. I'm so sorry. (laughs) My mistake. Law and ovaries. I cannot. You guys, I cannot. No, I definitely think this is a case that does show that our justice system is not perfect and actually is very much flawed Mm -hmm. where police tend to get tunnel vision on one person and force the round peg in a square hole theory right right you see it a lot it's also like 70 years ago yeah yeah it is 70 years ago 70 or eight more than 70 years ago yeah well i think heather said something earlier that was pretty like nailed it like whether he did it or not whether he was innocent or not it just like really shows you like you said how flawed the system was and like how advanced we've become in like our proceedings and like making sure that things are even and fair i was talking to someone who's a da here in reno that's one day here Here we go here's another one and like this was during covid and she was saying just like how much of that because of like people couldn't come in person to the courthouse, like how like lenient people were being and like just the justice system was being really unfair during that time. And she was like, it was like, we took a step back to the forties. There it is. That's why I said this because it all ties back to that number. Thank you. So like the people, like the, the jury was more lenient or was more harsh because they weren't in the room with them. She was saying like people couldn't show up to court and things were postponed and yet but still at the same time like there were also like times in which people would be like well we're proceeding anyways because of x y and z and this is that and we can't we're moving forward without like legal representation without proper like thing it was just wild she was like it was like the wild wild west out here. I don't love that <laughs> it was a little blip during covid just a little blip in the justice system yeah when covid was at its peak covid was a good time to murder man <laughs> <gasps> oh so you're saying crazy i missed out <laughs> you missed a window yeah covid was a good time to murder <laughs> don't take my word for it <laughs> but don't take my word for it try it yourself <laughs> <laughs>
It's too late, luckily. Well done. What would you be arrested for, Heather? My guess is not serial killing. Drugs, (laughs) obviously. (laughs) Because I'm such a party animal. What about you, Stacey? Well, I don't want to talk about it because I'm just In case kidding. it happens. In case it actually does happen. But I feel like it would be something stupid. Like, I forgot to put something. Like, I oh, forgot wait, something wait. Was underneath the basket. Wait a second. <laughs> Stacey was arrested for something. I forgot. <laughs> I was. Okay. I spent a weekend in jail. In Let what? me explain. <laughs> Because I was dumb and was like, I forgot to pay a speeding ticket where in which I didn't have proof of insurance with me. And so because you don't have, I had insurance on the car at the time, but because you don't have the stupid little paper in your car, they like can't prove it in the moment. So they tack that on until you can bring it to court and then they take that off, right? Because I forgot to pay it. It went to warrant. And because of the amount with the no insurance, it was like like almost $3,000 cash only to get out of jail. So I had to, and it was like a Friday night and they were like, ooh, sorry, we're going to try to get a hold of a judge. They couldn't get a hold of a judge to like let me out for the weekend. So I had to stay there all weekend and it was Super Bowl weekend. And this is the best part. I'm like hanging out in the little like area and all that jazz and like calling my dad and like crying and being like, dad, I'm in jail for a weekend. And he was like, oh, great. We'll say hi to your freaking brother. And I was like, what? And he's like, does any more of my kids want to get arrested this weekend? He got a D. UI that same night. Oh my god. Oh my god. Were you guys in the same deal? <laughs> we were, but in like separate areas. <laughs> Wow. Johnson's gone wild. I know. That's hilarious. Yeah, I just had to wait around till Monday morning. And then I saw the judge and they like let me go. And they're like, oh, so sorry. I was like, thank you. That what a nightmare. feel like something we need to be wasting people's time on. Like to arresting that. For an unpaid speeding ticket. Granted, I know I did what, what I did was wrong and I forgot to pay it and I was speeding. However, a little dramatic, yes. Also, we had a movie night one night while I was there. So does it, does that mean there was a warrant out for your arrest and you did something else fucked up and then they were like, oh, hey, you never paid this? Okay, yeah. So there was a <laughs> warrant out and then I got pulled over because, again, you know. Oh, she's a double offender now. Here's the real story. You were speeding exactly. again as you double like offender. to do. Reckless. I was speeding Casey again. Johnson. Reckless. I was going 65 and a 55. Jesus. I know. Look out, world. But that's wild. Like, the realization that there's been a warrant out for your arrest, like, seems like that would be just, what a dawning. I know. It was a mess, but I'm a stronger person now, and uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not a stronger person. I... I'm not a stronger person. I'm weak. What would you be arrested for, Veronica? Yeah, Veronica. Oh, murder. I mean, for sure. <laughs> Kill. Probably cereal. You're not wrong. I'd like to be arrested for freeing all the animals from the zoo or something. That would be fun. Ooh. Like, yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Let's see. If I could commit good crime, what would I do? I don't even know, but my dog just snorted. I feel, also feel like it would be like stealing all the animals from like a puppy store or something. Like that. <laughs> oh That'd be a good way to go. Like, uh, what was his name? Edward Furlong? Yeah. Tried to release the lobsters from a grocery store? Yes. <laughs> or something? Whatever that is, that sounds like a hilarious moment. Can you go to No, I think it was at a grocery store. Let me Google this in case he ever hears this. Yeah, in a store. He was on a location sh- shoot for the film Jimmy and Judy, and uh-huh. he was arrested in a Majer supermarket. A man after my own heart. Oh, in public intoxication. And then. Oh, there it is. Sounds like the one. He tried to release the lobsters. So we know who your second husband would mm-hmm. be if anything mm-hmm. tragic happens. Hit her up, Edward. <laughs> She's ready. Missed connections. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> All right. You have anything else, Stays? No, I think we hit on all the things you said I had. All right. Heather, you got anything? Just a good time I had with you gals. Thank you for having me. Same. Ooh.